Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Northwest University, welcome. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity every time we engage with the Faculty of Law because of the incredible expertise and the wide range of postgraduate programs they have on offer. Today we'll tell you a little bit more about it. But first, uh, to officially welcome you, let's have a word from the Executive Dean, uh, Prof uh, Dr. Neo Murray, uh, from the Faculty of Law. Good day, Goeiedag. I am Dr. Neo Murray, the Executive Dean, Faculty of Law, Northwest University. Welcome to the Faculty of Law, Northwest University. Our vision is to be regionally and internationally relevant. We embrace diversity, committed to community engagement, excellence and social justice. Our faculty is one of the best faculties of law in the country. We are proud of our alumni. The faculty have produced its share of community leaders, lawyers and judges who are helping to share and uphold justice in South Africa. We offer law programs across the three campuses, including the law clinics in Mahikeng and Pochistrum. We therefore have presence in an understanding of urban and rural environments. This is a place where every effort is made to keep students at the edge of their seats, informed and challenged. We are always available to our students to get to know you and discuss issues or support your ambitions. Thank you for choosing us. We are thrilled to have you. We welcome everyone here in South Africa and across the border. The Northwest University Faculty of Law, which has three sites of delivery, namely on the Mahikeng campus, Van der Bale Park campus and the Potchefstroom campus, wishes to welcome all prospective law students. We are proud of all the people involved in the faculty, the staff, the student and the alumni alike. We strive for excellence at our core business, namely teaching and learning, research and community engagement. We are committed to make a positive contribution to each and every student in the law and in our society. At our faculty, rest assured of quality ethical legal training, forward-looking research that is relevant and community engagement that takes into account the need for social justice. We want to create professionals from all segments across society to build a better justice in the future. You are welcome here. Gwakudzung, rao amuhela. Yai is baya welcome here. Rao amuhela moruna. Tino kugamchira imose, we tino faro kutimbori panones. Everyone is welcome here. You are welcome here. You are very welcome here at the Northwest University. We are so excited to welcome you here. We welcome everyone with passion for law with open arms. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you feel as welcome as you have been welcome uh, thus far. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here. And thank you to Dr. Neo for the uh, introduction and the welcoming to our session today. All right, so we have a few experts here and uh, also another expert uh, on Zoom. I'd like to introduce them to you and uh, give you a bit of an overview of what to expect uh, in the next few minutes whilst you are here in this uh, postgraduate focus from the Faculty of Law. Let's start with uh, who we have on Zoom. Uh, she is a, a very busy lady. And, uh, and uh, uh, the work that she does is incredible. We'll hear a little bit more about exactly what she does uh, later on. But ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Arnel Duplessis. Uh, Arnel, it's nice to have you here with us. Thank you very much, here, Pia. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to be here, and I look forward to engaging with you a little bit later. Much. And then uh, in studio here, the, the two people to my right and... Uh, 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 they are basically uh, quite ready to start rolling with all the information they'd like to share. 
Uh, we have uh, Advocate Renee Koran. She's the Director, Professional Development and Community Engagement. Uh, Renee, thank you for being here. Thank you, Fiafia, and good morning to our viewers and also to our potential postgraduate students. Uh -huh. Uh, and when we talk about postgraduate, uh, we, you have to hear the name of Professor Henk Kloppers, uh, the Deputy Director of Postgraduate Programs. Uh, Henk, thank you also for availing yourself to share some time with us. Good morning, Kepia. Thank you. It's good being here. Good morning, everyone out there. We're looking forward to engaging with you today and telling you more about our postgraduate programs and what it entails and what we are offering from the faculty side. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see... Uh, an array of topics uh, today. We'll hear a little bit about the uh, research focus areas because there's a strong correlation between what you guys focus on and uh, the postgraduate programs on offer. But we'll also hear specifics about the, the different postgraduate uh, programs uh, as well as a, a few of the supplemental uh, uh, attributes that go along with a postgraduate environment such as support and bursaries and when to apply and so on. So you'll hear all of that uh, today. But you're also very welcome to pose a few questions in the YouTube comments uh, section. Uh, we'll gladly answer as quickly as we can and uh, you can post immediately interact and uh, if, if possible uh, we can even ask some of the people here uh, to address those uh, comments and questions that you might have. So feel free to interact with us, you're more than uh, welcome. Alright, so uh, Henk, uh, let me start with you. Uh, let's start with the, the question, who should apply? Who are we talking to? Where should you be in your career or in your studies and so on? that would enable you or put you in a position to apply for postgraduate studies? Well, Gepe, we offer two broad programs, first being an LLM, which is the master's program in law, and then we provide or we offer an LLD, which is the ultimate qualification that you can get on, on higher degrees level. Um, who should apply? Um, for the LLM, preferably someone with a four-year LLB degree or a four-year law degree, let me put it that way. So, if you have, for instance, a BPROC degree, you would still be eligible if you meet the entry requirements, which we will discuss a bit later on. Um, added to that, if you have a, a three-year undergrad law degree, you need an LLB as well. So it's a three-year undergrad law degree plus your LLB. So in, 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 essentially, you need at least an LLB to get into our master's programs. And if we are talking about the doctorate programs, then obviously you require a master's program in law. We will talk about it a bit later, but we also offer a PhD in law and development where your entry course or your entry route is a bit different. But we'll come back to that at some stage to explain to our viewers what is the process for those who would like to come in. And, and do they need a, a certain uh, uh, average for a specific for undergraduate modules or for all in, in total or what? They, they do. So if, if you are looking towards Enrolling in the LLM programs, you need, need an average of at least 60% for your final year modules. So we are specifically looking at your final year modules only. So we make provision for the fact that you might have had a difficult or an interesting first year or even a second year. Or if you're on the extended uh, program, potentially, you might have taken a bit longer. But essentially, we're looking at your final year modules. So we're looking at the average for your final year modules. That should be at least 60 to get into our master's programs. And to get into our doctorate programs, you need to have an average of at least 65 for your uh, research product, which you would have delivered. And uh, uh, the, if they are uncertain, uh, the, the, the idea is just to apply and you'll evaluate that application. Absolutely. So we look at, we get various academic records from various institutions and they don't all look the same. So we literally look at every individual academic record to determine what is the state of it. Some universities um, have third year modules in the final year or fourth year modules in the second year. So it depends. So we literally look at every academic record, work out the average, and based on the average, we then decide whether or not you're successful or not. You've, you've touched on it a little bit, but you have both uh, structured uh, programs and full dissertations, yep. right? We, we actually have a third one as well, 
we have the structured program, which is your normal taught LLM, and we will hear about that a little bit later, where you have modules and you write a mini dissertation. Then we have a professional LLM in criminal law and procedure. This is, this is actually a very special type of LLM that we're presenting, and to the best of my knowledge, the university only have two of those. What makes this one a bit different is it's much more practice focused and the students don't write a mini dissertation as per the other structured master's program. So it is a bit different. So for those students who might not be as strong in research, there's an option for them. Those who are very practice driven, there's a definite option for that. And then coming back to the LLM by research, that's a full research master's. So you pick a topic, you write approximately 120 pages on a specific topic. So it gives you the opportunity to focus on a topic that what interests you. You write the minute, uh, dissertation and there you go. Yeah. It's, I, I like the, the, uh, the, the, the various options available because it, I think it leaves you with choice. I've, I've, I've always been interested in, in the, the different fields of study, but now there's also a different... Uh, uh, structure to your to your study. I like it because we are we are all different, and some prefer the the full dissertation, others prefer the structure of the, of the modules uh, on offer, and then as you said, the the practice uh, uh, based uh, focus. Yeah, we're trying to play to the strengths of the applicants. So some are much stronger in practice, and therefore a, a particular masters would would be best suited for them. Some are best suited for research. So we try and accommodate students who, and if you do the full research masters, the likelihood of you continuing on to our doctorate program is, 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 it's more likely that you will do that because then you're probably more comfortable doing research. However, speaking to the doctorate, the fact that you've done a, a structured masters program does not preclude you from going on to the doctorates. As long as you have a masters degree, you can be considered for the uh, doctorate program. Now, Renee, um the mode of delivery is then also different. I, I think for a full dissertation, I believe the relationship between the supervisor and student over an extended period of time would dictate number of contact sessions and so on. Yes, absolutely, and I think that is uh, something that the study leader and the, uh, the student uh, decide on quite early on, uh, you know, when they contemplate uh, a research a master's degree. And also for our structured programs, it's, it's very uh, structured, so to say. So we have uh, different modules in the different programs. Uh, you have classes. We usually opt for face-to-face -face sessions. Um, but uh, we all know due to COVID, uh, we had to revert online. And that's how we are currently running our programs. Uh, you say currently. Uh, so there will be a re-evaluation of this once we, we get to yes. the post-COVID stage in our lives. Absolutely. So uh, our, we have three si two sites of delivery on the Potterstrom campus and the Mahikeng campus. So usually uh, I know that the mercantile law and labor law uh, programs, that's both on Potterstrom and Mahikeng, and the rest of the programs is based on the Potterstrom campus, right? So when it's not a COVID year, uh, we'll do a re-evaluation uh, at the end of this year to see if a face-to-face -face session is possible. So, yes, so usually it's a face-to-face -face, uh, mode of delivery. We, we often get students, you know, when they apply, they're nervous about the whole process. So we'll get to the, the idea of liaising with your, your potential study leader and so on. We'll get to that a little bit later on. But in terms of the different qualifications on offer, there, there is often a code that needs to be typed in, and you need to be very specific about this. Tell us a little bit more about the, the program code. Yes, so each program have uh, the very individual specific code uh, attached to that, and you'll find that in the academic yearbook. And uh, for the viewers out there the, in the academic yearbook, we'll also put the link for you on our YouTube um, uh, chat box, so you will find it there as well. Uh, you will also find it on our website, and the website details will also be on uh, the, the chat box for you right now. So if you do have any questions regarding that, please feel free to send it uh, through to us, even on the chat box. Now, what this academic yearbook is all about here, Pierre, it basically sets out the faculty's rules and regulations. It also sets out the, the modules you have in the different programs. So it gives you an overview of what you can expect 
for the different programs. And the codes, of course, is also in that yearbook. And you need that code to apply for this specific program. So if you are contemplating a postgraduate degree, please have a look at the, the yearbook to get the specific code, and you have to enter that code in your application. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, you've heard the basics uh, by now. We'll get into more detail a little bit later on. Uh, but I'd like to uh, hear a word or two from uh, Professor Arnel Duplessis now. Now, as, I, as I've indicated at the beginning, uh, she joins us via Zoom. Uh, she is the, uh, uh, the uh, Saatchi Kles Chair. I think, uh, Arnel, I got that right. Um, and as I said, it's a, it's a fascinating role that you fulfill uh, with wonderful fields of focus. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what goes on in your professional life. <laughs> thank you very much, Sipia. And um, also thank you for the introduction and the context that my colleagues already created. So I'll talk a little bit more about the chair itself um, slightly later in the program, but for now, I think it is important to also emphasize that each of these programs that Hink um, and Renee introduced already fit within a broader research agenda that we have at the Faculty of Law for Northwest University. And, and that focus is called law, justice, and sustainability. Now, sustainability is very much on the global agenda, and it's also very important in the African and South African context, where it's all about taking a perspective where we try and balance social, environmental, and economic interests for everybody living in our country. And at the Faculty of Law, we look at this from the perspective of law and governance. In this unit, this research unit that we have with this focus that I've just mentioned, We've got different um, projects going on led by esteemed academics, senior um, academic scholars, and the work of our research, of our students, we try and fit um, within these different projects. And the reason being that that is how funding is channeled, um, channeled and it's also um, through these projects that you get exposure also to new research in the field, research opportunities in relation to conference participation, um, presenting at conferences even, and sometimes even access to bursaries. So it's within this unit that the chair fits, and our specific focus is on law, environmental sustainability, um, and um, cities. So we look at urban development and environmental governance from a local government um, law perspective, which is very interesting, very relevant. Um, and I can perhaps just mention that this is um, one of the, the products of years of specialization at our faculty in environmental law. Um, but I will get back to that slightly later. Thank you very much, Kipi. Thank you, Anel. Thank you for that uh, overview of, of what you focus on and uh, uh, the incredible work that you do. I tell you, I think in, in South Africa, the field that Anel <laughs> works in uh, is actually quite fascinating. Uh, all right, but, uh, but we've heard now about one of the fields. There are a few other fields that you focus on as well, Link. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. In the, in the structured programs, we've got pretty much eight different options that's available to our students. So the structured programs includes a structured program, for instance, in estate law, where we focus on estate planning. We've got a structured program in labor law, one in environmental law and governance, a new one in mercantile law, which been, it's, will next year be presented for the second year. We've got one in international trade law. We've got the professional masters in criminal law and procedure. And then we've got the LLM, structured LLM in international child law. So we, we try and cover the, a broad spectrum within our structured masters programs. And then in our research masters and in our doctorates, you've got the specialization field. So you can either choose to do a LLM or an LLD in constitutional law, for instance, or in environmental law, or in perspectives on law. So there's a, there's a few options. And, and for our readers out there, when you go into the yearbook and or onto our website, you will see that there's various options within the research masters and in the doctorates where you can then situate your research. So if you want to do something on constitutional law, 
you will go into the yearbook and find, find the code which is related to constitutional law, for instance. Um, and maybe just to come back to, to Renee's uh, comment earlier about choosing the correct code, the reason why we need the correct code is there are some master's degrees which have very similar names. And deciding on which code you use is the code we will use in your application. So it might be that you want to do the structured masters or the professional masters in criminal law and procedure, but you enter the code for the LLM by research in criminal law, and that would influence where your application lands up. So that's, that's why it was important that Renee mentioned, please make sure. If you're not sure, you're of course very welcome to contact myself or Prof. Akbar, who's our director, and we will guide you through the process, which is the correct code. Uh, you must have, uh, what, two, two and a half thousand faculty members with all the focus areas. It's, it's incredible because it's a wide array and, uh, and you have experts in, in all of those fields? We try to, Gierpia. <laughs> where, where we don't, we do go outside of the university. So if there's a very specific topic, we try to have an anchor inside the university and get expertise from outside. But in general, we, are, we, we very much... We're able to accommodate most topics. Yeah, yeah. If, if we really can't accommodate the topic, we will still discuss with the, with the applicant and maybe consider a different topic. But in essence, we, we attempt to do anything from space law to estate planning. It's yeah. the whole variety right. is there. So I've, uh, uh, you know, from time to time, I look at the, all the different experts we have at the Northwest University, and uh, you should do so too. Have a look at the uh, faculty's website, and you'll, you'll have a look under the staff members uh, at, at the whole contingent of, of people available uh, to provide you with uh, study guidance. And even if you want to know a little bit more about the programs uh, Prof. Klopper has mentioned now, uh, you can just have a look at the... Uh, uh, the drop-down section uh, right underneath this uh, video playing uh, on your screen uh, and you'll see links uh, that will provide you with more information. Uh, Prof. Kloppers has also been so kind to prepare uh, a, a, a video on, the, on, on stats and figures when it comes to the uh, Faculty of Law and uh, the, uh, the postgraduate offering and so on. Uh, let's have a look at uh, what Prof. Hank uh, did here. Welcome to the Northwest University. Thank you for the opportunity to welcome you to this great institution, where you will have the opportunity to further your studies as well as your field of expertise. You have made a fantastic choice to consider the Northwest University. This is a wonderful institution of higher learning and we have plenty to offer you. I am Professor Hank Kloppers, and I am the Deputy Director of Postgraduate Programs at the Faculty of Law of the NWU. I'm also an alumni of the NWU and I've completed both my LLM in Estate Law and my LLB at this great institution. At the Faculty of Law, we strive towards excellence in both teaching and learning as well as research. This is evidenced by the fact that a number of our colleagues on an annual basis receives the Institutional Teaching Excellence Award. Furthermore, we have a large number of faculty members who have received the prestigious NRF rating. Currently, we have more than 10 colleagues who have received this prestigious award. Our highest rated researcher is Professor Louis Kotzer, who is a B1 NRF rated researcher. More than 50% of our colleagues currently holds the LLD degree in various fields of expertise. To illustrate the faculty's commitment to research, and despite the impact of the COVID pandemic, in the 2020 academic year, the faculty has produced more than 70 research articles. These publications include books, chapters in books, as well as peer-reviewed academic journals. Added to our focus on research, one of our faculty members is currently involved in the amendment of section 25 of the constitution, while another colleague has been closely involved in the drafting of the new copyright bill. Another two of our colleagues has been appointed by the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services to his advisory committee. Added to this, some of our colleagues has recently been appointed to the South African Law Reform Commission. 
the faculty partners with numerous international and local universities, from the Cape to Limpopo, to the broader Africa, to Europe, and even including Australia. During the last decade, the faculty's postgraduate programs has grown in stature, both locally and internationally. The faculty offers a variety of structured or taught LLM programs in various fields of law. If your proposed research focuses on the topic of cities, law and sustainability, you can consider becoming part of the NRF chair, which focuses on these particular topics. At the law faculty, we have had over 1,300 registered postgraduate students over the last five years, of which just over 360 students were international students. According to the 2018 figures published by the Department of Higher Education in 2020, the NWU was favourably rated with a score of 85.75%, benchmarked against the other higher education institutions in South Africa. The NWU has the second highest number of graduates for the total number of degrees and diplomas awarded in 2018 and was ranked third highest for the number of students enrolled at. The NWU was the second largest university in South Africa based on total headcount. The NWU is ranked amongst the top 5% of universities in the world according to the QS ranking. Our university is dedicated to the critical engagement with legal challenges, emerging questions in the law and broader issues of legal relevance that confront modern communities. We hope to see you in class soon. So now I want to say thank you to uh, uh, Prof Henk. Uh, I want to say thank you and thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you for that, Professor. It's uh, uh, wonderful to hear from you uh, live and recorded. <laughs> so, thank you so much for your contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, we've promised you a little bit earlier uh, that we're going to tell you a little bit more about the CLES uh, Chair. Um, uh, and we will. Uh, I just also want to thank you for all your comments. We see them and uh, we try to answer them as quickly as possible. Thank you. Please continue with your participation. Uh, Professor Arnel Duplessis, uh, we are back with you now uh, and we are ready to hear some more about the Saatchi Kles Chair. Thank you very much. So for the viewers out there, this idea of a chair might sound strange. So it's not a chair like the one that I'm sitting on. The chair is actually referring to a unit within a faculty um, at a university that's got a very specific research focus. So this chair that we have at the Faculty of Law for Northwest University, as I've mentioned earlier, um, is focused on law, environmental sustainability and cities. And it's not only cities like in the Johannesburg, Cape Towns and, and Durbans of the world, it also refers to towns. But before I go into the focus of the chair's work, I can just mention that it's the only chair that we have at the Faculty of Law. We only have a handful of these across the country. So we are very proud of this, this unit that we um, received to host at the Northwest University for a period of five years. And um, it's funded by the National Research Foundation of South Africa. So it's government funded. And the NRF was joined in its funding um, by NetBank um, South Africa. So I'm going to do a screen share um, as I let you in um, on the work that we are doing um, at, at the um, chair of, um, um, at our faculty. I'm just quickly browsing it here. Apologies for that. So while I am searching, um, I am going to um, say a little bit more about where the students and postgraduate students fit into um, um, the chair's work. So the chair is headed by myself, um, Anel de Plessy, and that means that at the chair we um, have a couple of postgraduate students working on a full-time basis under my study supervision. So we have in the chair at the moment a couple of final year LLB students. They have lovely bursaries from the NRF um, and other sources as well. Then we have a couple of master students. Now you've heard um, about this range of um, master's opportunities that we have at the 
faculty of law, the students studying full time with the chair are all research based master students. So, so that's the master students. So they are not in a structured program. They devote their attention to a master's dissertation focused um, on the topic of the chair's work that you see there on the screen. Then the PhD or LLB students, we, we cater for both um, of those doctoral types. Um, they also conduct their PhD or doctoral theses on the theme of cities law and environmental sustainability. We also have a couple of postdoctoral fellows. So that is, there are people who already um, obtained their doctoral degrees and continue on a research track producing um, scholarly journal articles books and book chapters from the initial doctoral research. There you see a photo, not even all of them um, on here, of this year's um, team, um, master's doctoral and postdoctoral fellows. And at the chair, these students and myself work towards excellent scholarship on the intersection between law, environmental sustainability and urban development or local governance in South Africa, but also in other countries and in other um, regions of the world. We do in-depth research training and mentoring, um, something which makes me very excited of these students that are part of the chair. And we produce research outputs, in my view, of a very high standard that constructively contribute to sustainable, safe, inclusive, and resilient towns and cities in South Africa. So you've heard me talking about bursaries. Um, if you are interested in joining the chair on a full-time basis and you are in need of financial support, there are bursaries available. Some of these are sponsored by the NRF that I've mentioned earlier and, and quite stringent requirements apply to qualify for those bursaries. But we also have bursaries from other funders um, such as the German Konrad Adenauer Foundation. I should from the outset emphasize that Unfortunately, um, the chair is earmarked for students um, that, that's got a very strong academic background and a very strong academic record. So if you barely make the minimum requirements, it's unlikely um, for you to be um, approved to study within the chair. Um, but if you do make the minimum requirements, there's nothing preventing you from reaching out and inquiring how to apply um, for a possible um, inclusion in, in this research unit or this research institution that we have at, at the Faculty of Law. We've got a very strong focus on public law issues. Um, it does intersect with private law in, um, issues in some way, but mostly we work in the field of public law. So you, if you are interested in joining this team, you should have a strong um, affinity and um, um, love for matters of public law, and that would, of course, include constitutionalism and human rights protection of specified groups, um, public governance, um, issues such as um, corruption, service delivery, environmental governance, measures taken to protect our natural resource base, um, issues of infrastructure development, electricity, water, sanitation, housing, that's the kind of things that we work on and that makes us quite excited. You might be wondering when you should apply. So because of these different funding models that we have, you can actually reach out and inquire about possibilities for joining the team um, throughout the year. We take students in, um, in accordance with the, the academic um, calendar, but, but you can inquire about the possibilities anytime. Um, of the year. The, in our if bursaries for next year have already been filled, but we do have other um, options still available from, from the other funding streams. So where to, to look for more information? We are quite active um, on social media. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Facebook. Um, you see an email address there, Ms. Bernadette Anthony. She's the administrative assistant um, at the chair. We've got a website that's updated and quite informative. And we've got a regular newsletter where we share information about our research findings, research about our team, their achievements, the things that they do. And on the note of achievements, you may have seen also that recently 
Um, in the chair, we had one of the youngest ever PhD graduates um, of the Faculty of Law, and we are very proud of her um, achievement. So welcome um, to join the team. And if you are still uncertain about exactly what it is that we do, what we work on, please send an email and we will respond promptly. And on that note, I can just say that um, you will not um, make a mistake of joining for a postgraduate program um, at the Law, um, Faculty of Law for Northwest University. Um, I've studied um, here myself. Um, and I'm grateful to say that um, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, I, I turned out to go into the um, academic side of things, but many, many of our students um, achieve great things in practice based on the experience they got through postgraduate studies of our faculty. I wish you all well, and I do hope that some of you will consider to join um, the case chair team. Thank you very much. Back to the studio. Thank you, Arnel. We appreciate the overview and uh, uh, you sharing some more information on the work that you do. That's Professor Arnel Duplessis, and we'll say goodbye to her now as we continue in studio. Uh, again, thank you so much for all those of you who have uh, provided us with questions and comments and so on. Uh, we'll be addressing them. We'll get to the role of the program leaders and, and uh, the library and, and general bursaries and so on. We'll get to that a little bit later on. But I think we should take a, a few of the questions posted first. Uh, Renee, I think uh, this is something you might be able to answer. Uh, Zandri is asking, what is expected from you at the oral examination? Now, I, I like what Arnel said, you have to have a strong academic focus. <laughs> so well, being well prepared <laughs> is perhaps. Uh, yes. Yeah, so to, to answer the question, I think that, and that's why your relationship with your study leader is so important, uh, Zanri, because your study leader will also be able to prepare you. So it's not like you are going to be uh, in, in a room full of experts and you do not know what to expect. But usually, uh, when you do your oral, you should have completed your, your uh, proposal by then and an in-depth research of, uh, of your dissertation. Uh, as well as you should by then at least have a reading list. Uh, there are specific requirements to that as well. But like I said, your supervisor will be able to assist you with that. So in, in, in short, what you should do here is be well um, versed in your specific topic, uh, in-depth research of your topic at that stage is also um, quite important. Mm. Thank you. I don't know if, if Hank wants to add anything to that. Thank you. Yes, Renee. Um, I might mention that this is not an examination in the true sense mm -hmm. of the word. Um, we do use, uh, colloquially the term examination is used. However, this is more of an oral discussion, and I must mention up front that this is only for our research students. In other words, those in the LLM by research or those in the doctorate programs. This is not for the structured students uh, here. So the idea is that, as, as Renee correctly mentioned, is that you should be familiar with your topic already, your proposal should already have been approved. But the idea is that it's a research discussion. So the idea with the research discussion is just that, to guide you through your research and we use external panel members as well. These panel members provide their insights on, on your proposal. Um, they give clues as to where you could potentially go. So this is more an engagement with the student than a true examination. Mm -hmm. Yes, at the end of the day, we must say pass or failed. Uh, but in essence, it's more of a discussion. So I always tell the students, relax, take a breath. You know your topic. Go and speak about your topic. Mm -hmm. on there that you know uh, oral may seem as a quite daunting experience but it's quite a good learning curve uh, as well and and I think our students should uh, really take it just as that um, yeah. you know they they are quite richer when they come out of that discussion mm. and they know exactly what to do and where to go mm. so it's 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 a good thing yeah, and your field oral presentation is uh, an important skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we have another question here. Uh, Hank, for you, Lesedi is asking, if you are a fourth year LLB student 
and you are doing moot court instead of the mini dissertation. Does this disqualify you from applying for LLM, which makes use of peer research? Thank you, Lesedu, for that question. It is actually a very good question in the sense that uh, moot court is an elective that we present at the university, so you can choose between an, either the elective or the dissertation, as our viewers out, out there know, but it's not a disqualification. So if you did the moot court route, you're very welcome to apply for any of our master's programs, not, not necessarily the research or the other one. You, you can apply for any one. Um, the reason behind this is f simply because not all universities have the dissertation anymore. So I literally look at the average of the students on the student's academic record. So in short, if you have done the moot court, please do apply. We're not going to disqualify you. All right. Thank you, Inc. And then, uh, Renee, before we continue, Shante is asking, in what medium will the postgraduate programs be offered, taking into account the lockdown level, of course? So yes, it, 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 it's, it's both <laughs> medium and mode of delivery, I think. Yes. Um, so the medium, I think what you're referring to, Shante, is probably will it be online or will it be contact sessions? And... Um, like we said earlier, that's something that we're going to uh, reevaluate at the end of this year, depending on the lock le lockdown level uh, that we're currently in. So if we're still uh, probably in the same phase this time next year or the same level uh, next year, beginning of the year, it's probably going to be uh, in a similar mode of delivery as we have it now. But like I said, it's something that we have to reevaluate at the end of this year. Mm -hmm whether or not it's going to be online yeah. or whether or not it's going yeah, to be face-to-face. -face. COVID situation, we all Yeah, and we all have to adjust. Yeah. And, and fortunately, I must say, we've done quite a good job so far. Yeah. And uh, also our students as well has been able to adjust uh, to the online uh, platform. So yes, we, we're ready to go either way. Okay, thanks, Renee. Now, Inc, I'm sorry. Maybe if I can add there, Geerpe, given the size of our groups that we have in the postgraduate programs, it is likely that we will be able to return to some kind of contact teaching. Mm -hmm. um, given social distancing and what our current situation is, we're currently online, but I, I want to say I assume we will probably be in contact mode mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. Again, COVID dependent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if, if, if the status quo has continued as it is now, we will probably be back in some form of contact mm -hmm. teaching. All right. Now, Hank, tell us a little bit more about uh, what a program leader is, the distinction between a program leader and a, and a supervisor, uh, who, what, what's that all about? Thank you, Gepi. So every, every structured master's program, so that's where the program leaders come in, every structured master's program has a program leader. This is the, the person who oversees the program as a whole, in other words, who deals with admin inquiries, if there's any admin inquiries, if, if a student feels dissatisfied with anything in the program, after they've contacted their lecturer, they will then contact their, their program leader. So the program leader is the person who's essentially responsible for the program overall, while the supervisor is the person in charge of your research component of regardless of which degree you do. Mm. So if I'm interested in a particular program, but I want to converse with someone, I want to engage, in the, where do I go? Who do I contact then? If you're interested in a particular program, and, and our viewers out there will go into the breakaway sessions in a bit to be familiar with the program leaders. So they're very welcome once they identify the program leader to even now contact the program leader to find out more about the program itself, what the content is, or just general admin queries can go to the program leaders as well. Again, they're overseeing the program. Mm. So uh, thanks, Inc. We'll, we'll get to uh, the preparation of your proposal and so on, all the work that needs to be done, I think, actually before registration. Uh, but we'll get to that a little bit more uh, later on. Uh, first, the support given. Uh, we've heard now the interaction between uh, the program leaders, perhaps a, a lecturer here and there. Uh, but there's also support in terms of the library, if you have to read up a little bit, Renee. Yes, absolutely, here. So we are very fortunate to have at both the, the Potter's Room and my King uh, Libraries, so we have a research commons. So that is uh, accessible to all our postgraduate students. So basically, 
it is a specifically designed space where you will be able to do your research. So it's um, a bit cut off from the rest of the library here, there, but um, it's definitely uh, a space that um, is designed specifically for our postgraduate students. So you will be able to do, take your laptop up there, have Wi-Fi, be able to do your research, have access to, to, to the research material as well. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're very proud of that space. Mm. Uh, it's, I've had a look at all those research commons uh, areas in, on our three campuses, and they're all beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the, it's, it's, it, I can easily think that it becomes a home away from home. It sounds a bit nerdy, <laughs> but still, it's a wonderful space to, to operate in. Yes, and it's very conducive for research. I think that, you know, once you're in a headspace and you want to do your research, a space like that is very important. Mm. And I think that is what uh, we provide to our postgraduate students. Mm. Uh, another important thing, of mm. course, is financial support. Uh, and we've heard something about bursaries from Claes, but uh, there are also other bursaries available, right? Uh, yes, and I think uh, Hank can also elaborate on this. We do have a NWU uh, bursary, but we also have faculty bursaries. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think maybe Hank can maybe elaborate uh, on the specifics. Uh, and I think we also put up a link for you in the chat box. So if you want to have a look at the, the, the bursary options and how to apply, when to apply, you'll definitely find it um, if you just click on that link. So Hank, tell us a little bit more. Thank you, Gepi. Yeah, so there's uh, NWU bursary that is available to postgraduate students. If you have an average of above 60, in other words, you qualify for our program, you will then qualify for the NWU bursary. You, however, do have to apply. It's important that we mention this. You do have to apply for the NWU postgraduate bursary. Applications closes by the 31st of March. Um, and it is quite a substantial bursary, I might mention. This year, the bursary was just over 27,000 rand for a master's student. Um, it's a bit more if you're in the doctorate program. If you're a master's student, you can qualify for the bursary for two consecutive years. And if you're a doctorate student, for three years. So if you're a master's student enrolling into our programs, you could potentially get roughly 60,000 in NWU bursaries. So that's, that's the one, one side of bursaries that, that is available. And then from time to time, there are faculty bursaries available as well. This is a bit, bit dependent on the amount that the faculty receives from the institution. Once we do know what the amount is, then we open a call for bursaries twice a year. Postgraduate students can apply and, and the amount varies. It depends on, on funding that's available. So in essence, I would like to inform our viewers that our postgraduate programs are actually quite affordable in the sense that in many instances your postgraduate bursary closely covers your tuition fees. Mm -hmm. So that, that's getting taken care of. That's a massive bulk of finance there. I, I think the, the postgraduate programs at, at the NWU is probably some of the most affordable in the country. We do try and provide access to as many students as possible because we do know that there are students struggling financially. Mm. So how does it work when you, when you apply for ad, ad, admission to the university, do you immediately apply for the bursary? You can, you can apply immediately or you can wait for your um, application to be dealt with. Once you've heard that you're successful, you can then continue on to the bursary division. But as, as Renee mentioned, the details will be provided mm. and I encourage students to go onto the website to see what the dates are and what the requirements mm -hmm. are. Yeah, and if I may add, and, and just maybe to emphasize uh, what Hank said, it's two different applications. So please uh, make sure that you apply for the, the master's program or the postgraduate program, but you also apply for, for the bursary separately. Uh, and of course, uh, the details like Hank said will be up on your screen, it will be a link that will uh, take you to the information. We also, uh, for some of our um, maybe undergraduate uh, students, we'll also uh, send out the, the information on our eFundi platform, which is our internal communication platform for you. So you can also have a look um, there. Um, uh, Rene, I love what you're saying about the, you know, the, how easy it would be to access all the information. Uh, Leonie also asked, 
uh, if uh, this session will be available uh, later on, and of course, yes, uh, it will be. It will be here on, on YouTube, and uh, we'll also put it on the faculty's uh, Facebook page. I have another question here. Enrica is asking, with the LLM by research, will there be a specific, will there be specific modules in which we have to do research as well, or will it only be focused on our dissertation field? Kepi, perhaps I can take that one. Mm -hmm. um, since it's a research master's, there are not particular modules that you enroll for. You enroll for the LLM by research as a whole. However, we do have a, a research methodology component. During this research methodology, it's, it's probably two sessions per year, which is held over weekends, where we then introduce students to various research methodologies. How do you draft your research proposal? How do you go about writing your mini dissertation or your dissertation or your thesis? So there is a compulsory section on research to guide the students through their research process. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another question. Alicia is asking this one. And, and I love this question because it, I often get it. Why do we do postgraduate degrees? Why would you be motivated? Uh, what would entice you towards a postgraduate degree? Alicia specifically asks, uh, what are the benefits of doing an LLM? Well, the benefits are depending on your, your uh, intrinsic need to enhance your own education, of course. Uh, it's also um, a requirement for a lot of career paths. So, uh, you know, even like Inc. mentioned, our professional uh, in, in uh, criminal law and criminal procedure, uh, we have a lot of legal practitioners that's opting for that specific uh, master's degree because now it's becoming a uh, requirement uh, for the education. So it also opens up the pathway for, for further career options. So definitely something to consider. Also, if your passion is research and you want to become an academic, well, that's also your first stop after your undergrad um, degree opt for a postgraduate degree, which will be your master's, and then hopefully after that will be your doctorate degree. So it's, it's all kind of uh, climbing the ladder mm. uh, to success. But like I said, it's an intrinsic need, uh, if, if nothing else, to just enhance your, your personal skills, your, um, your education, your level of education, of course. It's a great journey to go on and, yes. and with so many and it, benefits along the way. It really enriches your life as well because you will see once you join the Faculty of Law at the Northwest University, we also have a lot of other options uh, available including um, you know, travel, of course, COVID compliant, mm. um, to be able to present at different conferences as a postgraduate student. That's also um, on the table. And of course, that is depending on your research uh, relationship with your study leader as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to choose the correct program, mm -hmm. something that you're passionate about, uh, here, here. Mm -hmm. And that they will also find, uh, like you mentioned, uh, in, on the scroll down, uh, at the bottom of the screen, the different links, and also, like I mentioned, uh, the different breakout rooms that we're going to join soon. Uh, be sure to, to, to browse the, the different options that we do have. All right. Thank you, Renee. Henk, I want to get to back to that uh, proposal mm. and uh, knowing what you want to do. Uh, but I have a question, a uh, related question. Does my fourth year dissertation influence my master program selection? Must it be in the same field? Um, if you can answer that one, and, and then also how you go about in preparing the proposal. Thank you, Kepi. So for, as we mentioned earlier, being enrolled for the dissertation in your fourth year is not a requirement. So if you have decided on doing the mini dissertation in your fourth year, you're not bound by the topic that you've done there. So when you go on to your master's program, you're very welcome to choose a totally different topic. You're, of course, very welcome to continue on the same topic, by doing that, you, you save yourself a bit of time because you've done some reading already, although many of our applicants might not have thought in their third year that they will continue on to their master's when they chose their fourth year modules yeah. or their fourth year topic. So I would, uh, in, in short, no, it doesn't, it doesn't influence it. You can choose a totally new topic. Important when choosing a topic, you need to be invested in the topic. It should be something that's, that really interests you because you are going to spend some time on that. 
If you're in a structured master's program, you're going to write a mini dissertation of roughly 60 pages. If you do the research master's, you're going to write something of probably about 150 pages. And of course, if you're doing a thesis, you're probably going to be writing roughly 300 pages. So choosing a topic is, is very important. I might mention to our applicants out there, um, the fact that you might have decided on a topic now does not mean you're bound by that topic once you're enrolled. So you will see during the application process, if you want to apply for the LLM by research and for our doctorate degrees, you do need to submit a four page, uh, what we call a concept note. Uh -huh. So the concept note is literally a, a short draft research proposal. The idea behind that is to give the faculty an idea of what you want to do mm -hmm. and to see if there's capacity within the faculty to provide supervision on that particular topic. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important that our applicants out there have a feel for what um, topic they would like to research, contact potential supervisors. And if I can advise all our viewers out there is to make contact up front with potential supervisors, discuss with them potential topics, and once you've settled on something, then do your application. Mm. So on the, on the concept note, is it purely about the concept or will you also have to uh, uh, describe your proposed methodology, for example? Luckily, and I know where you're coming from, so in law our proposed methodology is literally a, a desktop study, so that makes it a little bit easier, so you read and you write, that's pretty much how we, how we do it. But the, the concept note is literally just that, what is your problem and what is your research question? Again, just to give us a feel if we do have capacity, because it, it could happen potentially that your topic is not research worthy, or that someone has already researched that. That's, mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why we ask for the concept note, is to see if this has not been done before, mm -hmm. especially on doctorate level. Mm -hmm. It's very important because on a doctorate level, you need to make an original contribution. Mm -hmm. You preferably not supposed to do something that has been mm -hmm. done before. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll get back to uh, um, international applicants and uh, what they should do in a short while. But I think we must first uh, have a look at some of the alumni uh, of the Faculty of Law, uh, we have a very strong network uh, of alumni. Uh, but uh, watch this video and it'll tell you a little bit more about it. I am Advocate Hanneke Lauze. My name is Dr. Nicolene Stein. I'm Almeri van der Schuif. I'm Charlie Higgs. I'm Lou Ferry. I'm Chantal Beige. I'm currently a judge in the High Court of Pretoria. So I'm three attorneys working at Higgs Attorneys. They've all obtained our postgraduate degrees at the Northwest University. I had a wonderful experience when I did my undergraduate studies. The memory of Northwest University that I have is when I received awards for being the top achiever. And I was also one of the fortunate people to be funded for the master's program. Well, Facebook status that I updated in 2009, stating that I never want to hear the words unfair dismissal or unfair labor practice again. And thereafter, I did a postgraduate in labor law and now I'm a labor law specialist. The quality of education offered by the university, in my view, is exceptionally high. Because of the world-class experts that are available at the Faculty of Law. I can really promote postgraduate studies at this university. The lecturers are experts and they guide you along the way. The faculty embraces my affinity for novel and multidisciplinary research. Uh, Northwest University's environmental postgraduate program is, is possibly regarded as the highest in the country. That is facilitated by quality institutional leadership. But it has a healthy balance of diversity. Exceptional. Outstanding. Pride, self-worth. Always outstanding. I am a proud alumna. I am a proud alumna. I'm a proud alumna of Northwest University. Now, obviously, I'm uh, not a law expert, uh, so from the outside looking in, I'm always impressed about the, uh, the, the job opportunities and the career paths available in law. Uh, it, you know, you have this classic person standing in a court 
stereotype when you think of law, but it's more than that. Uh, it's incredible. And our alumni really represent all these different fields. Uh, we have South African students, we have international students. I know you also do a lot of work in international law, uh, not international law in general, but also in specific focus areas, but from an international perspective. So there's an international flavor to the work that you do as well. So we do accept international students. Absolutely, Geer In fact, we encourage our international students to apply. We, as a faculty, have a very strong strategic drive towards the SADC region, for instance. So we, we have students from SADC region in all our structured programs, for instance. So international students are very welcome to apply. Of course, we will have a look at the academic records. It will go through the SACWA process just to uh, get a feel for the academic record. But the fact that you're an international student does not preclude you per se from doing our structured masters and it has no impact on doing our LLM by research or our doctorate degrees. Mm. You would think that, that studying law is a country specific thing, but I assume it's not. It, it, depends, it depends on what type of research you do, uh -huh. um, so if, you, if you're in the research uh, leg of things, in other words you do the research masters or the doctorate, then you can literally do it on any jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. We prefer that there's a connection to the South African the situation as well, so that there's some kind of a comparative, mm -hmm. but in essence there's no issue there. The structured master's programs potentially is a bit more challenging in the sense that many of our structured master's programs are very practical and focused on the South African position. So what we do get in many instances is international students applying, doing, doing their master's degrees at the NWU and then continuing on in South Africa uh -huh. in whichever field they then did mm -hmm. their master's program. Mm -hmm. Do you find that your international students study uh, full-time, part-time? No? Uh, it depends, uh, but uh, most of the students that I've personally encountered studies uh, full-time. And I might just maybe add that if you are international student and you're watching this, uh, this, this webinar, uh, I'm sure uh, we have some. Uh, we are going to provide you with a very specific link in the chat box right now that you can link, uh, click on and maybe just find some, uh, out some additional information that you'll need in the application process. So if you click on that link, it, it should take you to the, to, to the specific requirements on our website. However, uh, if you just browse on our website, you'll be able to find that as well. Mm. We also at the Northwest University have the Global Engagement Office or the International Office as some people yeah. refer to it. Uh, which uh, su uh, provides support to our international yes. students. So the support is, is there. All right, let's get to uh, what now? Uh, when is the closing date for applications? Thank you, Gerpia. So the uh, closing date is the 31st of October. Many students have already applied and I would encourage our applicants out there to submit their applications as soon as possible because as they come in and get captured on our system, we do start having a look at them and evaluating them. So the earlier you apply, the earlier you will receive feedback on your application. We hope to have feedback to all our applicants by the latest mid-November. So if you have applied um, and you haven't heard something in, in, in a month, drop me a mail and just ask me, mm. I have applied, can you please have a look at it? Is this now for masters and doctorates? Masters and doctorates as well. We deal with it during the same, same period. Um, I deal with the applications for the LLM, the Structured Master's Program, and then Prof. Akhbor deals with the uh, LLM by Research and the doctorate students. Mm -hmm. uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to make contact uh, with us, uh, I think the first thing to do would be to have a look at all those uh, links that we provided uh, for you uh, in this session. Uh, have a look at the links, have a look at all the different focal areas and, and the specific programs on offer. Uh, also have a look if you'd like uh, at the yearbook uh, and then visit the Faculty of Law's uh, website uh, uh, at the university's website. Uh, it, you'll find a lot of information there uh, and between what you have here and what you find on the website uh, you'll have more than enough uh, to work with. Um, we uh, have also three lucky draws here. 
Uh, from what I understand, the faculty has prepared uh, a very nice hamper. Uh, I'm not going to say what's inside of the hamper, <laughs> unless uh, uh, you're curious to know that it's not a car, unfortunately. <laughs> We're not giving away cars, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's a nice hamper. Uh, and uh, I'd like to tell you who exactly won. We have three names here, three lucky winners. Congratulations to Tapelu John Sechwabe. Uh, Tapelu John Sechwabe, congratulations to you. Uh, also to Henrika Saunders. Henrika Saunders, congratulations. And then also John Fred Ocomp. John Fred Ocomp, uh, those are our three winners. Uh, you have won yourself a wonderful faculty hamper and we'll make sure that it gets to you. We'll get your contact uh, details and uh, we'll make sure that you get that hamper. Tapelu John Sechwabe, Enrique Saunders and John Fred uh, Ocomp. Uh, that's it, uh, Renee and Hink. Thank you so much uh, for, for being here and uh, and talking to us, you'll see that we have a, a, a lot more questions here. Uh, Herman de Jong, for example, before we say goodbye, let mm -hmm. me take his question. Doing your LLM, does the NWU link you with law firms or specialists that specializes in the certain field which you do your LLM? For example, having a Q&A with a specialist in practice. Well, it does depend on the specific programs. Yeah. We don't specifically link students to it. However, in our specific programs, you get to meet experts in the field mm -hmm. and you do get that, uh, you know, that sessions with the experts where you'll be able to ask questions to them. Mm -hmm. So you do get exposure to the experts in the field, uh, for sure. All right. Okay, thank you. I'm not going to take <laughs> any more questions. Uh, thank you so much again for your time. Uh, and for you, ladies and gentlemen, for, for tuning in and finding out a little bit more uh, about postgraduate studies in the Faculty of Law. As I've said before, it's an incredible journey and it's uh, one with so many milestones uh, as you journey through uh, becoming more, becoming better at your specific field. Contact us uh, and uh, let's get you going within your postgraduate studies.